Hello, thanks for joining me today. My name is Lynn and in this video I'm going to be making an envelope mini album using this spray paint cardstock from Colorbuck. It's um, really beautiful and best of all it was on sale so I thought it would be a great uh, paper just to prototype this. I did find that the cardstock cracked a little bit as I was making my album but I'll still continue to use it and show you how to create your own custom envelopes and uh, complete with their own little closure. So I do not have the We Are Memory Keepers uh, envelope punch board, but if you do, that's definitely gonna make really quick work of this. My scoreboard comes with this envelope template and it shows you for the card size that you want, how big of a um, sheet of paper you need and then it also shows you where to start scoring. So since I'm making this for myself and mostly so that I can just store my four by six photos, I'll be starting off with a sheet of cardstock that's going to be nine by nine inches. So I'm gonna take the 12 by 12 um, sheet and just cut it down to nine by nine. Now this paper is um, 78 pound cardstock, but it did crack on me as I was scoring and folding. So um, just be aware that if you do use this paper, that may happen and you may have to be a little bit more gentle with your scoring. So to use, at least on my scoreboard, to use the envelope template, you just um, line it up to the right side and there's actually um, a little um, notch on the scoreboard at the top and you look up the size that you want, line that notch up with the scoreboard and that way your paper can smoothly um, glide along that diagonal path and at the number that it tells you to start scoring at you just score right at that notch mark and that's really the only number that you need to know because from then on you just turn your paper one quarter turn and you line up your previous score mark with that um, the bottom of that little triangle what I like to do is I just like to note where that ends up at along the um, ruler and that way I can just if it's hard for you to see your score line you can just line that up at the um, ruler as opposed to trying to line the score line to the bottom of the triangle because it's always going to be the opposite sides will be the same so once you have all four score lines marked then you just need to notch out your corners and again if you have the we are memory keepers envelope punch board it has that built in but if you have a corner rounder um, you can use that on the four corners and then i just use a pair of scissors to do the reverse notch and i'll show you how to do that so basically you want to cut out that little triangle there where um, the two score lines intersect and that's because we'll be folding the flaps over and so you don't want that extra cardstock to bulge out that corner if you cut that out then the flaps will lay flat so what i do is i go up about um, half an inch or so and then i just cut a nice curved line right into the corner and i go around all four sides and do the exact same cut. And you can see I'm cutting right into the corner. And the curve isn't strictly necessary. Um, I think it just makes it look a little nicer. So then I flip the paper over and I do the exact same thing. And this time when you cut into that corner, that little triangle piece should just fall away. And so there you have it. So you don't necessarily need a fancy notcher. Um, certainly if you have the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board, that's gonna be built in. And so 
um, it'll be a breeze, but if you don't have it, you can definitely do it yourself too, just with scissors. So I'm going to fold over all of my uh, score lines, and I did find that even being gentle, I still cracked the cardstock. So I think it just might be that because this is being scored on the diagonal and sort of against the grain, that and anytime you are scoring against the grain, there is greater potential for cracking. Um, these papers are single sided, and so I've decided to just line the inside. And I have this 6x6 origami paper pack, and it is origami paper, so it is thin, but that makes it perfect for envelope liners because it doesn't add that much bulk to your envelope. And for the size envelope I'm creating, it's really the perfect. Um, size and it works well for a two size envelopes um, certainly for six by six size envelopes and um, it can even work for five by seven so I just use the same notcher and definitely if you wanted you don't have to leave that white border like I did you could push it all the way up to the edge and um, have that nice clean look as well I happen to like that little white border so I'm gonna leave it and I don't measure anything, so I just use the score lines that are already there, and I fold um, that main fold on the top flap, and that kind of tells me how to position my liner. And then I fold the side flaps over just a little bit because we'll need to trim that off. And that's the only cutting that we'll need to do. So I just take a scissors, a pair of scissors, and cut um, a little bit inside of that fold line. And really all you're trying to do is to cut away excess um, paper so that your flaps can fold down without any interference and so there I have a little bit that's hanging over the score line so I'll just continue to trim that off um, and you could be generous with your trimmings because um, it's it's not that bottom portion very little of it's actually visible so you can trim a little bit more aggressively if you needed to because nobody's gonna see it anyways so once you've got that nicely trimmed, then all you have to do is just adhere it. And uh, you can use any adhesive here, especially if you're using lightweight paper like I am. Um, you don't need anything super strong. So I, if you're um, conserving your score tape like I do, um, you definitely don't need it here. And I just attach the top flap because that's the only thing that's really going to be exposed and the bottom portion sits inside the envelope, uh, isn't very likely to um, get pulled up or anything. Now one thing to be aware of is if you are using origami paper like I am, a liquid adhesive is probably going to um, warp the paper a little bit because it's so thin. Um, but I, an ATG tape would work well here too if, if you have that. So once I get all the liners off, I just line this back up and then um, fold that down so that it adheres to the flap. And then there you have a perfectly matched complementary envelope liner. So it really makes your envelope look polished. And you can do this with ready-made envelopes as well. You could do it with your custom-made envelopes. And I do this sometimes when I give cards out during the year. I just, um, having this variety pack of origami paper, I can just match the liner. And it spiffies up just a plain white envelope a little bit. So. It's a nice little touch. Now what I do have is this We Are Memory Keepers um, envelope notcher. And what that does is it punches out this closure system. And it's great because this, um, I actually bought this notcher initially just to punch out thumb notches in uh, for my 
mini albums, <laughs> the pockets in my mini albums, but it definitely works great for its intended use as well. And I'll show you how to use that. It does come in two pieces and the base portion is, is fairly heavy and substantial. So it's got that metal plate down there and you just need to center it um, in your envelope. And I just used that little, um, I think it's a file folder tab, uh, and I'm using it just as a spacer so I can line it up fairly straight and then I'm sort of centering from side to side. Then you just um, fold over one of the flaps. Be sure that you're not lifting up your envelope. You want to make sure that your entire um, envelope is sitting flat on your table. And then you want to take the top portion and make sure that you can read um, whichever end of the flap you're punching. So if you're punching the bottom like I am here, you want to be able to read the word bottom. And then you just push down. So this is a pretty heavy duty um, two piece set and be careful not to sort of get your fingers pinched when you're placing uh, the top portion over that base plate. So just keep your fingers clear of that. And it's really simple. It makes lining everything up pretty easy. You just have to make sure that you're not lifting up the flap and um, you'll get a perfect punch each time. Now, um, what I didn't realize when I did this the first time was that after punching out that top section with the um, liner paper, those two um, pieces did come apart. So I did have to put a little bit of liquid adhesive there. But what I did on my later envelopes was I actually put some double-sided adhesive right under where I, um, it would be punched when I adhered the liner. And that way that whole section would be adhered with double-sided adhesive, like right in this area right here, I put some double-sided adhesive when I attached the liner. And that way when it got punched out, everything would still be attached and um, nothing's gonna lift up or, or um, bubble up. So now that we have that done, we can complete our envelope by just um, adhering these couple of um, strips of double-sided adhesive. I would use something maybe a little stronger than ATG here um, just because you don't want your envelope to fall apart. But um, so score tape would be great. My, the double-sided adhesive that I use, the generic brand, it's actually really strong too. I mean, I don't know how it compares necessarily to score tape, but I find that it's it's really strong as well. So you can use what you have. Liquid adhesive would be great as well. So there you have it. There's an envelope and you can make your album contain as many of these envelopes as you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, these be the pages in my mini album. And um, for each sort of hinge, I'm going to put two envelopes. And just like if you have created mini albums before, um, you can create pocket pages just like you would a regular mini album. So I'll be putting two back to back and if you did want pocket pages you would just put glue on three of the four sides and you could either have a top loading pocket or a side loading pocket that's completely up to you or if you don't want any pockets at all you could just adhere um, the entire back to each other. So I've already prepared um, the rest of my envelopes, so I'll show you now how to do the cover, spine, and hinge. So these are, I've pre-cut all of the pieces and I even started to assemble the hinge because I think sometimes it's easier to see um, where the end result will be um, that, rather than just showing you the process from the start so that you know where we're headed. And then I've cut from my colored cardstock the um, inside and outside covers. Instead of chipboard, I'm just using 110 pound cardstock scraps that I have. And it's um, pretty heavy duty, actually. 110 pounds is pretty heavy. I think it's thick enough for my purpose anyways. This is just gonna be a storage, uh, photo storage book. So um, it's not gonna get a lot of um, interactions. But, and this is such a small album that it's great to use up the scraps as well. 
So you'll need one for the front cover, one for the back cover, and one for the spine. And I've cut these to be, the covers to be a little bit larger than my envelopes. And that's so that everything tucks in well and it doesn't, um, the envelopes don't peek out. Then I'll be wrapping my um, heavyweight cardstock. And I, this is how I like to, um, uh, wrap my cover. I like to do wrap the pieces individually and so I've cut separate pieces of cardstock about an inch larger than the heavyweight cardstock that will be wrapped and for the spine piece I did give myself a little bit extra on um, both the left and right side because that's going to be the flap that attaches to the front and back cover and my um, Designer paper is cut to be just a little bit smaller than the heavyweight cardstock, and that's so that you still see a little bit of that um, color cardstock border. So you get a nice matted layer there. Um, and I just sort of embraced the colorful nature of this paper pack, so I've chosen these nice colorful um, cardstocks, but it also will hopefully help you kind of see the individual pieces too. So the spine might be sort of the most complicated part of this whole process, but it is really simple once you understand the concept. And so I'm going to have four hinges and the hinges are these um, pieces that are standing up. They are half an inch tall, and I've already assembled three of them. So your pages are going to be adhered to each side. So um, that's why I've put tape on both sides of the hinge. And in total, that's going to give me eight envelopes because each hinge will be able to carry two envelopes. Now, I've left myself a little gusset, which is the space in between each hinge. And in this case, I'm only doing a quarter of an inch gusset. So you can see you get this sort of um, peaks and, and valley look once everything is assembled. And how you determine the size of your gusset and hinge is completely up to you once you know how to do this manually instead of buying a die, which will you know constrain you to just that configuration. So if you're going to be adding a lot of embellishments to your pages, then maybe a wider gusset is something that you want to create. If your pages are really large, like you're doing an 11 by 11 album, or it's going to carry a lot of flips and flaps, maybe you want a taller hinge, like a three-quarter inch or a one-inch hinge. So that's completely configurable once you understand conceptually how to create one of these. And it's really simple, so you just are going to make a series of score lines and then adhere the hinges together so they form those peaks. So I'll show you how to um, do the scoring just on a piece of scrap paper here. And um, it should just give you the gist of how you would do this on your own. Now the first score line that you want to make, I tend to leave it myself an inch and a half because that first score line is going to be where your hinge meets your cover and it's going to be where that fold is. For demonstration purposes though, um, I'm just going to score at one inch just so that we have enough paper to demonstrate. Then your next score is going to be whatever gusset you want. So in my case, it's going to be a quarter of an inch. So I go one quarter of an inch and I make another score. Now each hinge is going to be two score lines and my hinges are half an inch tall. So I'm going to make two score lines a half an inch from the previous line. And then that gets me a gusset and one hinge. And if I want another page, then I do another gusset and another two score lines to make a hinge. So you just keep, keep on repeating that pattern for as many pages as you like. And then you just give yourself one final gusset um, before the back cover piece. So now when it comes to folding this, what I like to do is I like to um, identify where my hinges are and I like to fold that together first. 
because those two pieces are going to get glued together eventually. And you give it a good burnish so it's a nice crisp fold. Then you can fold back uh, where your gussets are and then start training your paper so that that hinge can fold back and forth comfortably. And once you have your hinges identified, then um, the rest is pretty natural. So you have those peaks and you just want to um, tape them together so that that hinge essentially becomes one piece. And I've already done that for my first three and I applied tape already on the back side of that fourth hinge. And so all I'm gonna do is um, I'm adding a little bit of liquid adhesive to my double-sided adhesive just to strengthen the paper a little bit, but typically if I were doing this as a album that I was going to give somebody, I would use the strongest adhesive that I had, which generally is going to be either my score tape or red line tape. So you can definitely use whatever you have um, and whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, the double-sided adhesive tape is nice because it's um, strong and it sort of grabs instantly. You don't have to wait for it to dry like you would a liquid adhesive. So once these are all done, then I just add some double-sided adhesive to the hinges on both sides. And then I'm going to miter my corners. And that way, it's going to be easier to fit my pages um, in this case, my envelopes onto the hinge. And if things weren't a hundred percent the the right sort of height, then at least your hinge won't be peeking out um, between your envelopes or your pages. If this was this is you would do the same process for a regular mini album as well. And so. It, Kind of looks like I measured wrong here because my hinge looks like it's taller than my um, envelopes, but that's okay. We can fix that. Um, essentially, once you put this together, though, you want to decide whether you want pockets, either top loading or side loading, and um, just adhere your adhesive accordingly. Now we've got our cover pieces and our spine. And again, I'm just using heavyweight cardstock instead of chipboard, but definitely if you were making this album to last, you probably want either lightweight or medium weight chipboard. Um, some people I think use matte board as well, and um, that's definitely an option. And here, again, I'm going to just use my generic double-sided adhesive. Um, all four corners, whatever adhesive you use, definitely burnish well because that's going to prevent any air bubbles. It's going to make sure that um, you have good adhesion. And if you're using a liquid adhesive, it helps to kind of spread that adhesive out um, evenly. And so there's just no harm in over burnishing. You really just can't burnish too much. <laughs> so, and here I'm just using colored cardstock. I think it's Recollections. This takes a score and a fold pretty well, so um, I found that it, it held up better. Now, I miter my corners so that I can wrap uh, those flaps over. This is kind of similar to why we had to miter the do the reverse notching on the envelopes, because those flaps are going to get folded over. Now, one thing is, is that when you do the difference is when you um, are mitering your corners on your cover wraps, you want to leave a little bit of space. Um, don't cut right into that corner because there's the potential of uh, exposing your, in this case, I'm using heavyweight um, cardstock, but if you were using chipboard, there would be um, the risk of exposing that little corner and not having it completely wrapped. So here I just score and I just gently wrap. I put a line of liquid adhesive right um, on that edge and it kind of helps to soften that edge a little bit. And um, I think you get a nice finish that way, but obviously you can, you can do what works for you. I just happen to find that this method works well for me. And I like to push in those corners to make sure that they 
get adhered as well. So once you have all four sides wrapped and well adhered, then, um, then you can start putting your pieces together. So the one difference is, is that um, you can wrap your front and back cover like this, but on your spine piece, you're going to want to only um, fold down the top and the bottom. And as I mentioned um, before, if I'm making an album that I want to last or something that's going to be a gift um, that I give to somebody, I this is where I use my strongest adhesive. So I typically will use score tape for this entire process, but because this is a little bit of a prototype and it's just for me, um, I'm just using my generic double-sided tape here. It's held up pretty well though, so I think my generic score tape is actually pretty strong. Or my generic double-sided tape. Um, so I am scoring and bending at these lines, um, these side flaps, but I'm not adhering it down because they are actually going to get adhered to the front and back cover, not to the spine piece. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that for the um, front cover and the back cover, and so now I'll show you um, how to adhere the spine to the back cover. And all you do is, again, you would use as strong of an adhesive as you can, and on these flaps, I even use Tyvek just to, again, reinforce that flap. And the nice part about wrapping your pieces individually is now you can just butt those two pieces up against each other and you don't have to worry about figuring out how much of a gap to leave between your spine and your cover because these are individually wrapped and so you don't need to leave room for the cardstock to sort of comfortably bend. So I find that this has a cleaner um, look for me. It lays flat and there's less potential for um, cracking, which I've had album covers crack on me when I haven't left enough of a gap between my chipboard pieces um, on the spine and the front cover. So now I'm going to adhere my hinge to my um, book, but again, because I somehow measured wrong, my hinge is actually larger than um, my pages, my envelopes, so I'm just going to trim that down. It's better that it was too tall rather than too short, um, so I'll just trim that to fit, and um, then we're good to go. So, no worries. I took a little bit off of either end because I did miter those um, corners and now the miters are still more or less intact. So, that's looking good. So now I'm going to put down my hinge onto the spine. And um, essentially you want to um, center your spine top and bottom, and then you also want to make sure that your score line that you made for where it, the cover meets the spine, that you're meeting that up with um, where your spine is. And you just do the same to the back. You just want to make sure that you can comfortably, comfortably bend and fold, and then once that's down, you'll just want to give it a really, really good burnish. The spine and this hinge system are the most important parts of your album, of any album that you make, because that's going to hold your pages in. And so you definitely want to use the strongest adhesive you have, whatever that may be. And um, then you can you know, be assured that nothing's going to uh, fall out and it's important that you uh, give it a good burnish as well so that there aren't any air bubbles and no potential for um, your adhesive to dry out and maybe create a bubble later. So that's 
the basics of our um, book right there. And that's the basic structure of any mini, mini album. So um, now that you know how to do that, you can really create an album of any size. So to kind of um, cover up all of our wrapping, um, you just lay down a piece of design paper and this is decorative, so you can use any adhesive you like. Um, ATG would work great here. Liquid glue, whatever you like. Um, it's not as important that you're using your strongest glue. Um, I happen to be using liquid glue because I do want it to soak into the cover and just give it a little bit of extra firmness because I'm not using chipboard. Um, and so that should help it feel like a little bit more substantial and sturdy. But again, um, you can use whatever you like. And I actually kind of like how um, fun <laughs> the different colors are. I usually just wrap my cover and spine in all black or all ivory, but these uh, multicolored uh, wrapped covers are actually kind of cute and I mean they definitely go with this paper um, pack but it's pretty fun to see all the different colors too so I actually might do this some more maybe um, if I'm making albums for my nieces I think that would be like a lot more fun than just sticking to um, one color so um, once you uh, have those in, again, give everything a really good burnish and then we can decorate the outside with our pattern paper. And I brought out my ATG gun just um, so that it's fast. But again, on the covers, I was added some liquid adhesive as well, just so that it helps stiffen up that cover a little bit more. And I don't put a ton of embellishments, um, like metal embellishments or flowers or anything like that on my covers. And so um, I don't feel like I need like a really strong adhesive here. If you were going to add a lot and, and you thought that that might impact um, how well that paper sticks down, you, you could use a stronger adhesive if you needed. And there we have it. So that's the basics of our book. And then I've got all of my envelopes here. Um, I'm just going to kind of put them in the order that makes the most sense. And really what I'm doing is I'm matching up the envelopes so that they're roughly the same size. Each pair is roughly the same size because these were custom made. There's you can expect that there's going to be a little bit of variation in size because um, try as you might, at least try as I might, I, I can never get everything like 100% the same size. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave um, a pocket. But what I want to make sure of is that my hinge can fold all the way down. So I'm going to center my envelope uh, up and down and then just fold my hinge over on top of it and then that just ensures that the hinge can fold all the way down and I add a nice bead of glue um, to the side and bottom because I want a top loading pocket and then I just line up the um, second envelope that goes with that page at the edge and then I push inward towards the hinge and so I'll just keep doing that. And because I am using a liquid adhesive, um, I do use some clips to keep all of those together just so that everything can stay together while the um, adhesive dries. But uh, I do, as always, give it a really good burnish on both sides. And um, here you can see me adding. Those are just sewing clips that I have. So you can use binder clips or anything that you have. Um, it just helps keep those pages together as they dry. Um, and the reason why I'm using liquid adhesive is because liquid adhesive will eventually dry, whereas uh, double-sided adhesive, sometimes it, it doesn't dry all the way complete. And so sometimes when you stick something in, it might stick a little bit. So I decided um, that I wanted to add little label windows to each 
envelope. That way I can stick a little tag in and then um, label the contents of each envelope. So I happen to have this nested die set and I took three, these happen to be the three smallest and um, scale wise I think they worked pretty well. And I taped them together just as you see there and ran that through. And that gave me all the pieces that I need to create this. Plus um, the smaller frame is just an extra. You can use that on a different project. And I found a little stitch circle die that worked out pretty well. And um, that way I can just create a little thumb hole holder to, to pull the tag out. So I've already created a bunch, but I'll show you how I assembled uh, these. And I just cut out, uh, using the largest die, a piece of the cardstock. So because I'm using acetate, um, I'm actually gonna use my three-in-one beacon glue because I find that that just holds a little bit better uh, for me than my PVA glue. So I'm putting glue all around the frame and then I'm just going to adhere that to a piece of acetate which you can use sort of recycled packaging materials whatever you have you don't necessarily have to buy acetate if you don't want to or if you don't find that you use it that often and I just fussy cut around it um, you could definitely use the die to cut out the acetate too if you wanted but this was a simple enough shape that and I'm not that great of a fussy cutter, so but even I could cut around that. <laughs> so um, that's the extra frame, so you don't need that. You can set that aside. Now we just want to adhere our little window piece to our um, colored cardstock. And it looks like this was an extra one that doesn't actually match any of my envelopes, but um, I'll just keep making it anyways. So now when you attach your window, you just want to put adhesive on the two sides and the bottom. And I start a little bit lower, that way it's just easier to slip something in rather than having the adhesive go all the way up to the top. So once that's done, I um, cut off a little portion of one of my circles and I use the second circle as a backing and then I've got a little tag. So I created matching tags uh, for all of my little uh, label windows and just put some of that beacon three in one glue, give it a really good burnish. Um, that stuff is really strong and dries pretty fast too. So um, I highly recommend it. And it's, it's really, I think it's similar if not the same as fabric, fabric tack which if you do a lot of lace embellishments, um, you may already have. So I'm just gonna, now you've got like a nice large surface and that's one of the reasons I backed it with cardstock so that when I go to adhere this on my envelope, I have a nice flat even surface to adhere. And having the little tags that can slip into that window means that if I ever change out what's in that envelope, I can always cut myself out a new tag if I need to relabel that envelope, the contents of that envelope. So I still have one more to make, which um, I'll just do at the end here, but these are super cute. So you could even make little labels. If you were giving this to somebody, you could put, you know, handmade, buy, or something like that. So here we are. This is the final album. And so everything is nice customized. These closures are fantastic because they don't add any extra bulk to your album and um, they keep everything just very streamlined and um, simple if, if you don't like to add a lot of ribbon and lace. And the envelopes are really large. I mean, they can even fit a five by seven. This is a four by six that I'm slipping in and it very comfortably slides in there with a lot of extra room. So I can fit either a five by seven or just a, a nice thick stack of four by sixes. Uh, I was able to put, I think, 10 plus photos in. And here I'm showing just similar to regular mini albums, you can turn these into pocket pages as well and put tags in um, those pockets too. But definitely you can use this concept as just a 
portion or a design concept for one of your pages in your mini album and the it just makes your sort of repertoire of mini album designs it gives you sort of another tool in that toolbox and another element that you can add so this book I, I really love how it turned out. I'll definitely be making more, possibly as gifts. I'll probably, you know, just choose a different cardstock though because it did crack regardless of how gentle I was being. <laughs> this um, cardstock cracked quite a bit and I'm okay with it because this is mine and I'm using it as photo storage so it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. But definitely I would recommend if you were going to make something like this as a gift for somebody, then I would choose a cardstock that's going to hold a score um, better. Uh, in particular, making your own envelopes because it does score on, on the diagonal and that's against the grain. You'll um, want a nice high quality cardstock. But, I, I love how it turned out. I hope you liked how it turned out too. If you give this a try, definitely let me know. I'd love to see your creations. And if you have any tips and tricks for me, please do share because I'm always trying to learn as well. And um, I hope that you'll stay tuned as I create more albums and share more showcase walkthroughs and or tutorials if there's a new technique that I happen to have picked up and think that might be nice to share with you. So in the meantime, um, happy crafting and have a fantastic day.